to know what's important to you, to know what drives you, to know how you make decisions, to know how you can move forward. Hello, everyone. It's Nathan Freeberg. Welcome back to the Leadership Vision Podcast. This is part two of our Looking Ahead series here at Leadership Vision. This episode is meant to inspire you to dream into your vision for 2023. And I know that the word vision can you know, make you think of, well, a lot of different things. I think it's different for everybody. And what we're trying to do here is inspire you to to really think differently about maybe the way that you are approaching your job, the way that you're approaching your parenting or family life or, you know, community activities, whatever it is. And that really starts with understanding your values. What are the things that that you value in life? What are the the ways that you're living your life so that these values are seen and heard. And if this all sounds like a lot of woo-woo, kind of wishy-washy stuff, it's like, oh my goodness, I've done so much of this. Yes, I totally get it. When Brian and Linda told me that we were going to be talking about this, I kind of felt the same way. But then we actually got into it. Um, and by got into it, I don't mean this episode. I mean, we kind of started this process a while ago. Uh, because if you missed the previous episode about this, we're really thinking differently about everything that we're doing at Leadership Vision and kind of put everything on the table to say, how are we going to be making an impact this year? Are the products that we're delivering our clients, what we want to be delivering, is that the best for them? Is that the best for us? And really kind of put it all out there. And we certainly don't have all the answers or have it figured out, but I think that this episode will be one that can inspire you to maybe do the same thing, or maybe it will just reinforce some of the stuff that you've already been doing in such a way that says, yes, I I think that we're on the right track. And so um, if nothing else from this episode, we invite you to join us on the journey, whatever journey you're on, and join us on our journey so that together we can say, we are going to make 2023 the best year ever. We are going to uh, stumble and fall and get back up and continue to push the ball forward, the proverbial ball forward on our goals, on our dreams, whatever it is that we want to do. So um, here it is. Listen to this. And of course, if you have questions about it or want to say, hey, I really resonate with this or this doesn't make sense, please email me, Nathan at leadershipvisionconsulting.com. I'd love to chat with you. And and maybe even we can talk about what some of your big visions are for this year. So here it is, a conversation between Dr. Linda and Brian Schubring and myself talking about our vision for the year and helping you, inspiring you to dream into yours. Enjoy. I think every once in a while when you're anticipating a transition, you look back and then you look forward. You go, you look where you were, where you were and kind of where you want to go. And in the middle of that, you try to figure out where you are now. And when Brian and I went into our fall vacation, I think the only vacation part was we were away from normal life and in a warmer climate. Huh. And might have been by a pool and a beach. Uh, but the, the gift of that time was we essentially started to actuate on three different goals. And the first goal was to, to really detect what our current values are, not just be driven by the values of the past, knowing that we were beginning to change and knowing that there was a different landscape, uh, and really starting to ask who our clients are and who is working with us and why. The second thing we wanted to do is be able to be really clear about who we are and what we offer and what is our purpose and why we're unique and what we bring to the table. And it was more than just strengths. And so we wanted to wrestle with what our niche was, why do people come to us, Hmm. what were the common threads, and really simplify the message. That was the other goal. And the third thing that we did was, okay, then how do we start to organize, knowing those Knowing those two things, how do we start to organize around or reorganize the the business in order to structure it in a way that we could we could find some momentum and forward movement <laughs> into twenty twenty three, knowing that when you have the right players, you can do that. So we kind of lived into those goals, and turns out that walking on a beach, you can. You can you can, you can, ad- you you can, can change the world when you're walking you on the beach. You can change right? the world. So can I ask I, a question? Yeah, yeah. Sure, I, have. I want to interrupt you. I like this here. The invitation for our listeners is to dream into your vision for the year. Last year, we recorded 
something kind of like that. It was uh, like about goals and habits and setting intentions for the year. Yeah. I don't know that Brian Linda I we've ever had a conversation about setting goals, setting intentions like in a specific way like we're doing now. We've talked a lot about the end result, but the process of getting there. I'm curious what might be helpful from that as we've all just done this or are doing this as we are going to be challenging our listeners to dream into their vision for the year. How do we do that? Brian and I just recorded something else where I kept saying, "What's step 1?" Okay, talk about that. Da, da, da. Okay, now what's step two? Da, 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 da. Okay, now what's step three? Wait, go back to step one. Wait, what is this called again? And so I realized it's not a, um, you know, a super straightforward, simple thing of like, you know, making a recipe for lasagna per se, but <laughs> that's uh, simple and straightforward. That's I don't a know. Lot I was just of, trying to think. That's the first that's thing that came to my mind. That's a lot of steps. That's a lot of steps. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I would answer that by like, what is the first step? And it's sometimes like, don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. I think there are times where we've all overcomplicated our lives, but also our businesses, our work. Maybe we think too much into it, more talking, um, uh-huh. or more, you know, than actually working on something. I think the three things that we were seeking to do and bring clarity to allowed us to practice the fundamentals. So, mm-hmm. what is it that we really need? And we knew that we needed to and understand our values, our purpose, and kind of organize around that. When you're applying it to your life, it's what are the non-negotiables that of these, The what are your fundamentals as a, uh, a thriving human being, as a participant in society, as a family member, as a loved one? What does that look like? How do you love yourself? And so sometimes it's kind of looking around and sometimes taking cues from looking back and saying, those things didn't work. I'm not going to continue that. I'll leave it. I'm going to leave that behind and I'm going to look forward and kind of lean into a new way and develop truly habits that begin to stick by making some uh, micro Mm -hmm. adaptations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I heard something last year about the idea of habits versus goals Yeah, and how creating a habit is perhaps a more um, a, a, I don't want to say a better goal, but it's more helpful in a lot of ways because rather than saying like, I want to read, you know, 50 books this year as the goal, it's like, well, what do you really want? It's like, well, I want to be a person who is, who is learning, who is, you know, reading every day, who is bringing in information. And so kind of like what you're saying there, if to back up a little bit to say, what's the true, you know, is your actual goal to read 40 books? Cause mm-hmm. you could just go get a bunch of children's books and you can knock that out in the next month. Um, versus like, what is your actual intention here? And so often I think our society is focused on those, those like specific number goals, like, you know, running a marathon in this time, lifting this weight, you know, losing weight or whatever it is. And, you know, especially a business, you know, this is the number with a dollar sign in front of it that we want, but really backing up. And what I think what I appreciate about the process we've done is saying like, what, what are we actually doing? How are we trying to change the world? How are we trying to serve our clients and others in our community in such a way. So yeah, and I like I like that thinking too because it's not I remember someone telling us again a, you know a deadline is not a goal. Right. <laughs> um so I remember thinking about that but I also well a yeah, a goal is one thing, but a a practice and a habit are the fundamental building blocks of you know, what you want to actually accomplish and who you want to, yeah. who you want to be. And how you want to grow and how you want to develop and That's how right. you want to change yourself to change others and make an impact in the world around us. So real quick, can you quickly just kind of tell everybody how Leadership Vision is going to be changing the world in 2023? We already are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I know we already are, but in... <laughs> That was a joke. Oh, Brian is taking the suit coat off and he is about oh, to boy. say something oh, profound boy. in the house. Mr. Schubert, wait, let me take it away. One second. Let me let me cue up the dramatic music. Okay, go. I um Nathan, you asked a question earlier about like the the process of dreaming into vision for the year. I've been thinking about that ever since you asked that, because what we're saying now, it comes from a much different place than this kind of process has come in the past. I think that 
a lot of what I have been working on or investing in as an individual has created a greater sense of awareness and presence within like mm. the end of last year, which really caused me to have this sense of agitation, um, not dissatisfaction, well, probably unfulfillment, just frustration with what was going on. I, I just felt like we were in this reaction mode again and again and again. And that just wasn't who, it, it doesn't really feel like that's who we are. Um, we're not a reactionary entity. We're much more reflective and responsive. Very responsive. Like very responsive and adaptive to what we're being asked to do. And I felt like we weren't in that that place. So before going away, like Linda said, for 10 days, there was this sense of um, awareness and urgency of, you know, something's changing. I'm not quite sure what it is. And so to dream into the vision of of the new year, I had to really accept the reality of what was happening in the present year of 2022. And that was the real catalyst um, for me. And that process then of understanding, you know, what are these values going to be? What is our, our niche? How to really prepare for the business? I felt we arrived there after having done some truly deep question asking of what's really happening, what's really going on, and are we okay with this? And this acceptance of we have the ability to change this um, and and to set ourselves on a course that takes advantage of what we've learned. And it came with a lot of humble opening of our hands to say, I don't need to grab onto this. What what will be next? I'm I'm willing to let this go. I'm willing to let that go, and I think the three of us have done that uh, as well as we have have journeyed and planned planned for this year together. Planned for the next several years. This is funny. One of the evening meals that we had in these ten days, I said, I just think we should look at everything, everything in our lives, yeah. whether it was work habits, uh-huh. whether it was time, whether it was like what we're eating or I thought that was a great idea when we're working out all in on that. Yeah. So (laughs) I had this enthusiastic husband, partner, business partner say that let's do it. Let's Mm -hmm. do that. So I have my first suggestion. He's like, Oh no, that that's never going to work. I'm not doing that. Oh no, I'm not doing exactly. (laughs) Oh, you've heard that before. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing doing that. that. No, I don't even remember exactly where it was. I was like, I do. Her first suggestion was, let's change the time that we have dinner to later in the evening. Well, to eat at 5 p.m. with the senior citizens. Hey, what's wrong with eating at 5 p.m.? (laughs) It's fine. I've been eating this way our whole marriage. However, (laughs) which is great for a, a, a lot of different reasons, but I know that sometimes I get in a role and I just want to keep working into the afternoon, into the evening, or that's when I want to meet people. Or that's when I want to start connecting. And I think for the last couple of years, we've just had this, you know, different routine. Uh-huh. And so before even hearing me out, Brad's like, nope, not going to happen. I'm like, well, we need to maybe revisit how we. Okay. How open, Your agreement that you just agreed to that? a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> well, but this is this is an interesting, I mean, we're kind of joking about it. And if you're watching them, it's you can see the, the slight <laughs> awkwardness on both of their faces right now. But. This is an this is an interesting dilemma that you might bump up against on your team where you have something that seems as simple as like, well, let's switch the time of dinner, you know, whatever that simple thing is. And one person's like, whoa, 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 that's, I hold that value strongly for this reason. The other person's like, yeah, but I hold it for this reason. And so you've got to come to some level of understanding and agreement. Yep. I don't know if you guys want to go back in the hot seat, but what did, what time is dinner now? What, where did you guys land on that? Reevaluating the, sh- the shoe brings don't always eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting eat that since oh, coming yeah. back from this time away, um, we still have not fallen into a normal pattern. Okay. What I see emerging is that the time is necessarily changing, but are we both here at the same time to do that? And I think that the answer mm-hmm. to that is no. Okay. Um, so we haven't figured that part out yet, but it started with this invitation that if we're really going to reevaluate what we're doing, then let's honestly say that everything is up for debate. Everything's up for discussion, everything. And 
Linda started the whole thing with a reevaluation of our values. That I was not ready for. And that came like on day two or three of our time away. And just that alone was like, oh, so that's how we're playing? Like, you're going to go after our values? Like, I was totally yeah. like, oh, no. <laughs> but then as, as Linda began to discuss what it represents, it took me a while on, on that walk to, to let them be, yep, I guess I, th- this is what we're doing. If we're going to truly look at and reassess everything in our lives and in the business, then again, how to share it with Nathan, then we right. really have to say everything is up in the air. Everything. Yeah. We've done too much work to not respect the process. So question here then, Brian Linda, how did you, uh, and, I'm, and I'm looking at this this leadership vision, vision 2023, this, this three-page document that we've been working off of for the last yeah. however many weeks. How and why did you start with values? And would you recommend everyone does do that? And, or maybe this is part two, there's this idea of like begin with the end in mind. So did you start and think about that and then kind of work backwards to get there? Or what is... What did that, I'm trying to ask a succinct question. I don't know if there is one because really what I am, and also let I'm not st- trying to overshare, just, yeah, go for yeah. it. I think, okay, you know so what I'm, I think you know what I'm trying to ask. Yeah. yeah, let me start to answer it and then you can re-ask your question if I don't exactly awesome. answer I, what you're trying to. Answer exactly fun. what I'm thinking in my head, please. Uh, the three of us have all been Dare to Lead trained with the Brene Brown mm-hmm. work. In the Dare to Lead training, we discovered our values for ourselves individually. I think that is a great place to start. To know what's important to you, to know what drives you, to know how you make decisions, to know how you can move forward. That's great. So we've done that work. We know some of those pieces. Then how we begin to turn that into the leadership vision values was my statement of, Let's detect those similarly to how we did it individually. Let's start to pay attention to the words that stand out. And it wasn't like our previous values weren't accurate. I mean, hmm. they were, but in, in values you shouldn't mess with, you know, people say you shouldn't mess with them for like five years or so. So this wasn't like yeah. a, we're changing it every year. These have been you know, our guiding values over the past maybe six years, seven years, eight years. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. So now was we're going into um, a different phase of our business. As we look around, how do we detect those values, which is important to us when people um, experience our resources and our content and they listen to our podcasts and then they Mm -hmm. hear us speak or they hear us interact or they... Uh, feel a certain way when they're with us, how do we capture that? And so I began to, you know, put myself in the shoes of our clients. Like, what would they bump into? And then what what kind of, what is the value um, that we have that we're exhibiting? That last part, that's what I felt. I felt that Linda was saying, we have changed as individuals to the core. Mm-hmm. We have to revisit our values because my vision for the company was beginning to take some shape. What I felt was Linda inviting me to truly start from the foundation, which is our values. And what I heard her saying was, we are going to change our values. I'm inviting you to start thinking of some, and I will too. So it started by... (laughs) Her saying, this is the, the direction that, that we're going. Everybody's saying, this, this is, what is we're doing, right? why this is important. Yep. Yeah. And we are going to change our values while we're down here. Um, and then, but then Linda said, so start thinking of them. So she didn't ask me for a conclusion on that walk. She didn't ask me to have something done by the end of the day. She said, let's take some time and let's do this while we're here. And that invitation was for me something that was very life giving because then I knew that I was a participant. However, Linda did give me a leading value, and that was about connection. Because she says, I mm. think that someplace that we can start is something that she knows that we are about, and it's connection, mm-hmm. being connected, being connected to people, being connected to experiences, being connected to place, being connected to ritual. And she said, that's so fundamental to who we are 
then she asked the question, is that also not fundamental to what we're trying to do as a company by creating a meaningful connection to people? Mm -hmm. So that's where she started. She didn't say that's the end goal. That's not the, where we're going to go, but let's start thinking together like this. And so just giving me that example and the invitation to participate, I was like, okay, like that just got the wheels rolling. Um, and that's how this whole process began. Brian asked for like, tell me, you know, tell me more about what that is. And I said, what well, does it mean we, to you? Mm -hmm. we create space together. We mm -hmm. create space together, Nathan, and like when we're talking, all of us, that allows people to step into that. And then we're not telling right. you what to do, but we're often sharing from our expertise. We're sharing from mm -hmm. our lived experience and people feel some comfort. Today we were in person at the client and we walk in and it's the husband and wife banter and it's the Brian and Linda coffee pushing the door. I don't know, whatever happened. And people are just like enjoying themselves, but then they're right. recounting things that they learned last week from us. Mm -hmm. and uh, what they learned from whatever they said out loud to us. Basically, they're learning from themselves, and they're, they're recounting that learning. And I thought that the connection, you, you can't underestimate it. Right. The funny part of all this, Nathan, is as That's I invited funny. Brian to begin thinking about them, um, he had some values that I really liked and other ones that I thought, no. Um, and like then vice versa. Yeah. And that also went the other way, too. There were mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. Value ideas that Linda had. I'm like, no, that's Vito. not a value. Yeah. Right. 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 Well, so that's one a process. Of, one of our walks, one of our walks, I said, I would like you to argue my position, my value, and then you'll argue my position. Oh, by the way, these walks, every day for the 10 days that we were right. down there, every day we we walked for 60 to 90 minutes on the beach to just have these conversations, have these discussions. It was very intentional. There were times where it was very emotional or very excited or very ideating. Every day was different. So on these walks, we would talk about whatever it is that we thought was relevant. So what Linda's referring to is, all right, she's like, I think she said, all right, Joker, you think that your values are so great. I want you to, to and that some of mine are bad. Well, why don't you take one of my values and tell me why it is a value? And so then I said, all right, well, that's the game we're playing, Joker. Then um, you have to take one of the values that, of mine that you don't like and tell me why it should be one of our values. So, you know, and for those of you who know me, like, okay, any game's a fair game for me. So let's Bring it play on. this game. Bring it on. Um, yeah. But in that process, I think that what that did was it's like, all right you wear it for a while and see if it really fits. And I have to say that in that process, um, when I had to defend a value that I did not want to accept, one of Linda's ideas, it, it ended up making our list. Because mm -hmm. as I talked about it, I began to go deeper and deeper into what the value meant hmm. and realized that all three of us, Linda, Nathan, you, myself, we all carry this. And I remember saying to Linda, as we're walking on this beach, I said to her, one of the common frustrations that we all three shared last year was our inability to meet this value. Hmm. Um, and I said, that's why it matters. That's why it matters because every one of us are concerned about it. We are concerned about living this value. We are concerned about performing to this value. And we are concerned that this value has importance to our clients. And as I talked about, I'm like, yep, that's it. We cannot go forward without having this recognized as a value. Then once we named it, we even changed the name <laughs> once we got home. That's right. And right. sat because, with it for a couple of months. Because the name or the, the value is rooted in some sort of excellence or higher standard. So mm. we'll we'll fill you in more on, on that journey. But it, I mean, he finished, Brian finished arguing my point of view. And I was like, mic drop. Boom, huh. I went. Like, <laughs> You're like he I nailed got it. it. He nailed mine. it. This he nailed mine. it. Um, and then when Linda was defending my value that I had scientific data to back up, I realized that, yeah, it's not no, a value. It's an no, outcome. not good. No. And that was so, the one about eating at five o'clock? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We have You have to have time for your food to digest before you, before before you go to bed eight. at seven o'clock. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Can I recap yeah. or, or summarize a little yeah. bit here? What I yeah. what I hear you saying is that 
Well, the beginning of the year is a great time to start thinking about goals, thinking about habits, thinking about whatever you want to accomplish in the next year. And, you know, it's a little bit arbitrary because there's like lots of other kind of natural points to do that. But as you're doing that, rather than, you know, just putting down some, some number, because they say, you know, goals should be measurable. So rather than just saying we want to, you know, do X, Y, Z business, do whatever, and just kind of putting down numbers to actually stop and think about what it is that you're actually trying to accomplish, what it is that you're trying to do in the world. And a very significant, powerful, profound way to do that is by evaluating your values. And, you know, we've got, um, I think, three different podcasts about our values from several years ago. Um, So, you know, if you want to look in the show notes for that. Um, So to take it to essentially reevaluate what your values are and see if those things still um, hold true to you. And I, I think one of you said this, or maybe I've read this some way, but... You don't just go pick your values, like look for a big menu, like at the Olive Garden and say, I want this one, this one, and this one. They are more like, should come from like who you are and you know, what your organization is doing. Is that, did you yep. say that or am I? Yeah, they're, they're, but that values are detected. They're, yes. They're what happened, mm-hmm. yep. And we were asking ourselves, what happened last year um, as a company? What were some of the reasons why we were brought into places or to work with people and and, and this, I think, is the really important end. Linda and I have gone through such transformation in the last year. We realize that we are different and we are showing up in different ways to each other as partners, as a couple, and we're showing up differently to our clients. And yeah. again, back to that detecting, what are some of the ways that we're showing up and what are some of the, the, the ways that we're engaging our clients and how do we capture that? Mm-hmm. in a value like we're already doing it right. it's only a respectful ask to us as individuals to to ask to name it mm-hmm. you know to really right. get an accurate representation of this is who we are this is where we are and this is how we're moving forward mm-hmm. now a list of words is helpful it's some ideas. helpful to give yeah. you ideas to mm-hmm. give you kind of like is which ones resonate and you're picking from them but sometimes people pick aspirational values and not actual values. Hmm. So this exercise where what are our actual values that are going to help us drive to, you know, where we want to go this year and in the following year. Something that I find really helpful is when kind of envisioning this future, you just start writing. And, you know, kind of like for this year, I want to be whatever, 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 and just kind of you know, unencumbered, just kind of write something and see what comes. I think if you are trying to be like, what are my values? And you start with these lists or whatever, it can, I think it can be a little too confining. And so then, you know, write this manifesto, if you will, and then kind of come back to it maybe a day or two or three later and sort of try to pick out themes or try to get at what you really, what it is that you really want uh, maybe to accomplish or achieve um, in the year or three years or 10 years, or, you know, by the time I hit retirement, you know, whatever, whatever it is. The only other thing about values are sometimes you need a thought partner. And so we often say, mm-hmm. like, share that with someone. Oftentimes when we're have, even having strengths conversations with people and we're sitting down with someone for an hour, and we're listening to their strengths, we can vary, and, and partly because we've done this for years, but mm-hmm. Brian and I can detect what the values are, not just what their strengths are, but the the things that are most important to them. We'll hear the value of family, the value of home, the value of safety, the value of, you know, being able to provide for your, you know, yourself or your loved ones, um, or the value of having wonderful things. So, and, and anywhere in, in between, but find someone, a friend that knows you when you're saying like, this is kind of what I want to be about yeah. and take that risk like I did with Brian to to really discover what what values mm-hmm. you might have. I think when we kind of set those intentions, when we, you know, write write a manifesto, for lack of a better term, and share it with someone, um, especially if it's someone on your quote unquote team, someone that can actually that you, that you want to help you like achieve this, then they can, you know, really like you said, hold you accountable, or just give you like gentle nudges, or even just act as a bit of a filter of you know, you said you wanted to be about this thing, but it seems like what you're doing is not, 
in alignment with that. So yeah, competing. What's, what's going on there? Yeah, it's competing with with that value. Final thoughts, Brian and Linda? I feel like we've covered a lot here that really I hope is giving uh, our listeners just some inspiration to really dream into their vision uh, for this year and beyond or reevaluate maybe what their values are and how it is that they kind of want to achieve those things. Yeah, and we're, ex- well, the only thing is like we're excited in the uh, the future episodes to be able to speak a little bit more about mm-hmm. um, and articulate um, kind of what we've, what we've come right. to. More to well, come. One thing I think I would maybe like to have the final thought on this okay, do it. is, so Brian and Linda did, did this process, the three page document I referenced earlier. And I got to say, I've referenced this so many times for different podcasts. And I'm curious, maybe we'll play a game if people can kind of pick out the clues of uh, where are they? Oh, yeah, that was Easter that eggs. One. Yeah, the Easter <laughs> eggs. But even, even as, you know, we're in this process of creating an online community, which is, you know, courses and curriculum and just a learning space for leaders to gather, for people to gather, really, to kind of invest in themselves and their teams. And this document has been so helpful in kind of setting the direction, setting some of the like, what is, what is it that we're doing exactly? Why are we, we doing that? So the, the point of me sharing that is, so for leaders of teams, for you to get clear on your vision, for you to get some clarity around, you know, what are our values? What is our area of focus? What is it that we're really doing is incredibly helpful and empowering to the people that you work with because they're looking for that. Um, and what's been interesting, so in my time in Leadership Vision, we've done similar things like this, but they haven't quite been this um, straight, if you will, or this quite on a on a rail and going, phew, well, like, um, going in the direction. So, so thank yes, you. That's be, how you feel. Good. And Nathan, you're welcome. And thank you because I think we were all asking for it, and I knew the if we if we can make some of the things a little bit more simple, and they could just be easily <laughs> referenced. Um, sometimes people spend so much time building a lengthy page after page after right. page, twenty five page business plan. That doesn't ma- that doesn't really matter the next day. Exactly right. And instead, this time we were finally distilling our thinking to mm-hmm. get to the place where you know this is this is where we're headed. This is what we're where we're going to be about. So I'm glad it's been helpful because it's been helpful yeah. to me as well. Mm-hmm. We're not going to get into this really here, but we we followed kind of a specific model for this, I think, which maybe we can share some of that in the show notes. But I would my advice to anyone listening is just find something. Brian, Linda, thank you so much for sharing this. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. And thank you for listening to the Leadership Vision Podcast, sharing our expertise in the discovery, practice, and implementation of a strengths-based approach to people, teams, and culture. From our resources about developing your strengths, the strengths of the team, or the strengths of your entire organization, click the link in the show notes or visit us on the web at leadershipvisionconsulting.com. And if you have questions about this episode or really any of our other resources that you may have come across, We would uh, love it if you could send us an email. You can just email me, Nathan, at leadershipvisionconsulting.com. And we would also love it if you found value in this. If you could leave us a review on iTunes, that really helps other people find the show. But perhaps more importantly, if you could share this with someone that you think might benefit from this idea of going deeper in their strengths, the strengths of their team, or the strengths of your entire organization. I'm Nathan Freeberg. I'm Linda Schubring. I'm Brian Schubring. And on behalf of our entire team, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for happy, listening. happy New Year. Thanks for thanks listening. for happy listening. I think we can happy still say Wednesday. Happy New Year. I think I can that, say Happy Wednesday. I don't know. I think I you can know. say that until February, maybe. <laughs> so anyway, well, it's right. the it's the Lunar New Year. There you go. Happy there Lunar you. New Year. Happy Lunar New Year. <laughs>